This is Wednesday, August 18th, 2021, and we've gathered to offer evening prayer right to on the commemoration of William DuBose. We begin on page 115 in the Book of Common Prayer, but we'll start with a few moments of silence to quiet our hearts and focus our minds. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Page 117. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We pray together the hymn, O Gracious Light, as found on page 118. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is a portion of Psalm 19. We begin at verse 7 on page 607, and we'll pray together verses 7 through 14. That's Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14, found on page 607. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. 
even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that he may warn them so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as I mentioned, today is the commemoration of William Porcher DuBose, priest and theologian who died on August 18th in 1918. He is, um, well, I'm going to read two different descriptions of him. He's a serious candidate for the title of greatest theologian that the Episcopal Church in the USA has ever produced. He was born in South Carolina in 1836 and attended the Military College of South Carolina, now the Citadel in Charleston, and the University of Virginia, Virginia in Charlottesville. He served as chaplain in the Confederate Army, and after the War of 1861 through 1865, served as a parish priest. In 1871, he became a professor at the University of the South, an Episcopal institution at Sewanee, Tennessee, became Dean of the School of Theology in 1894, retired in 1908, and then died in 1918. He was fluent in Greek and well-read both in Greek philosophy and in the early Christian fathers. Among his numerous books, the best known are the Soteriology of the New Testament, the Gospel in the Gospels, and the Reason of Life. Soter is the Greek word for savior and soteriology is the branch of theology that deals with such questions as what does it mean to say that Christ saves us? How does this death and resurrection do us any good? How are the benefits of Christ's work applied to the individual? And so on. A quote from one of his articles follows, quote, God has placed forever before our eyes, not the image, but the very person of the spiritual man, we have not to ascend into heaven to bring him down, nor to descend into the abyss to bring him up, for he is with us and near us and in us. We have only to confess with our mouths that he is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead and raised us in him, and we shall live. Now from lesser feasts and fasts. They say he is probably the most original and creative thinker the American Episcopal Church has ever produced, spent most of his life as a professor at the University of the South at Swanee, yay, Swanee's right, and he was not widely traveled and not widely known until at the age of 56, he published the first of several books on theology that made him respected not only in his own country, but also in England and France. Excuse me, DuBose was born in 1836 in South Carolina into a wealthy and cultured Huguenot family. 
At the University of Virginia, he acquired a fluent knowledge of Greek and other languages, which helped him lay the foundation for his profound understanding of the New Testament. His theological studies were begun at the Episcopal Seminary in Camden, South Carolina. He was ordained in 1861, became an officer and chaplain in the Confederate Army, and doctrine and life were always in close relationship for DeVos. In a series of books, he probed the inner meaning of the Gospels, the Epistles of Paul, and the Epistle to the Hebrews. He treated life and doctrine as dramatic as a dramatic dialogue, fusing the best of contemporary thought and criticism with his own strong inner faith. The result was both a personal and scriptural Catholic theology. He reflected as he acknowledged the greatest, the great religious movements of the 19th century, those being the Tractarianism of Oxford, the liberalism of F.D. Maurice, the scholarship of the Germans, and the evangelical spirit that was so pervasive at the time. The richness and complexity of DuBose's thought are not easily captured in a few words, but again, this following passage, written shortly before his death, is a characteristic example of his theology. And we hear this same quote again, and it is so rich. God has placed forever before our eyes, not the image, but the very person of the spiritual man. We have not to ascend into heaven to bring him down, nor to descend into the abyss to bring him up, for he is with us and near us and in us. We have only to confess with our mouths that he is Lord, and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead and raised us in him, and we shall live. DuBose is highly revered or was highly revered at Swanee up until the last year. Um, there has been for a number of years the DuBose Lecture Series uh, sponsored by the School of Theology. We heard all about him when I was there studying for three years. Um, he really is a, a well-learned man and his books are exceptional. Um, uh, he does abide by that very Anglo-Catholic um, faith tradition and yet is evangelical in his fervor. Um, but the problem with DuBose has always been that not only was he a chaplain with the Confederate Army, but he was an officer with the Army. And for those who don't know the um, history of the University of the South, it was founded by six bishops, Episcopal bishops, all from the Southern branch of the church. It was a bastion of con the Confederacy. Matter of fact, the uh, cornerstone that had just been laid at the start of the war was blown up by the Union soldiers when they came through on their way down to Chattanooga. And um, unfortunately, he was a slave holder. And he wrote many times in his books that the slaves were less than human, that our race being the Anglo white race was the true human race and everyone else beneath us. And that colors, for lack of a better word, all of his theology, for all the richness that he had, we realize how he was affected by the culture of his day, that that was the prevalent thought that, you know, I, I believe it from the constitution that folks believed that African-Americans were less than human. Um, and so that has tempered things. They now no longer refer to the lecture series as the DuBose lecture series. It's now an academic thing. And I'm hoping eventually we can find a balance because the man's writings are superb. And yet, again, his life example of being a slave holder, and it's believed a slave abuser, colors how he is perceived today. We're reminded in that gospel reading of the rich man who had everything, but who lost it in the end because he did not see the humanity in the man at the gate, the man who was lower than him. And may God grant us the grace to remember that we are all created in the image of God, male, female, slave, and free. Thanks be to God. Continuing on page 119, let's pray together the song of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. 
for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Turning to page 121, we continue with the prayers. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the suffrages. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We now offer the following collects, the collect of the day. Almighty God, you gave to your servant, William Porcher DeBose, special gifts of grace to understand the scriptures and to teach the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. Grant that by his teaching, we may know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And turning to page 123, please join with me in the Collect for Peace. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And on page 124, join with me in the collect for the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. And hear this collect for the unity of the church. Almighty Father, whose blessed son before his passion prayed for his disciples that they might be one as you and he are one. Grant that your church being bound together in love and obedience to you, may be united in one body by the one spirit, that the world may believe in him whom you have sent, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And on page 124, join with me in the Collect for Mission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. 
pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. This time I invite you to unmute yourselves and offer prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. I bid your prayers for the people of Afghanistan, Amen. for our leaders as they try to sort out how best to respond. Amen. And invite your prayers for those on the West Coast dealing with drought and fire. Amen. And here in our own area, those responding to the recurring pandemic in our midst. Amen. And for the people who, of Haiti mm. who have battled both earthquake and now hurricane. That's it. Jesse. For David and Amanda and Andrew family. Fred. Linda. Jim. Kathy. For Aaron and Stacy. For Pan. For all those who support the hospitality house and their reconfigured luncheon this Friday. Amen. Grant them the means to meet their financial goals. Give thanks for our daughters of the King and their faithful ministry of prayer and witness to the grace of God. And for the Holy Cross family. Mm -hmm. Pray for the layman family and friends. Mm -hmm. May God grant us wisdom, courage, and strength to reach out to all in need. And precious Lord, we lift up these petitions, intercessions, and thanksgiving to your presence. Please join with me in praying the general thanksgiving on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>